Um, hello and um, welcome to my channel once again. Uh, this morning I'm doing a video to enforce one of the things I said in my seven uh, point things that students do or if they do it in another way they can rake in um, at least 20 marks. I just want to prove it and that's data question. Yeah, a number of students don't do data questions. They just look at it and they just look away. Or they feel, oh, it's TMI, <laughs> too much information, and they don't bother. But you know what? You need to attempt every, every question as data question because the answer is in the question. So I have titled it Data Must. Data Must. That means every data question is a must. I'm using this paper as an example. This is the AQA Combined Trilogy Science um, Assessment Paper. So for this new GCSEs, exam boards have released the assessment materials or resources. Now, this, this is an AQA Biology Paper, the assessment material that has been released. On this paper alone, there are 36 marks, data question marks, that if you were to pay attention, read the question, try and understand what the data is talking about, then use the information, obviously based on the science you've already learned in school, you'll be able to answer this question. So you can easily get 36 marks from just doing the data questions on this paper. I'll show you specifically. Now this is page 10. Page 10 has got a data question, a very simple one, about heart rate, how exercise affects heart rate. And that question is a total of nine marks. Count with me, nine marks. Then on page 14, I'll show you. On page 14, there is another data question. If you were to add all of those up, it's a total of five marks. Hold it on page 18. There is another data question. The data question that starts from page 18 is a total of seven marks. Get it? Seven solid marks by just looking at the data and using it to answer the question. And then I've got two more on page 22. This is an experiment on photosynthesis, how photosynthesis can be carried out, or they said a student carried out the photosynthesis. It has to do with data as well. It's experiment, but it's data. There are some core practicals that you're required to do for the new GCSEs as we no longer have the coursework. So you're writing a 100 mark paper, it's a one hour, 45 minutes. So this is an example of how the practical you've already carried out will be tested on the exam paper. And this leads on to a six mark question as well. So that question is a full nine marks. The last one that has to do with data, by the way, this is, um, a, this is a, a graph. It has to do with that same question. So if you understand your graphs very well, which you would have been doing from primary school, then you should be able to tackle the data question. If you're still struggling, don't worry, it's not the exam day yet. You still have enough time to revise and go over it. All right, now that is the last one on this paper and is on page 28 and is a total of six marks. If you were to add all of those together, that's a good 38 marks. So it's so important that you answer the data question. I'm now quickly gonna run you through just one of them. The very first one, which is on page 10. It says, um, some students investigated how exercise affects heart rate. Figure four shows their result. So this is their result. This side is the heart rate in beats per minute, and this side is the time in minute. This shows you the graph of student B and the graph of student A. You say, what was student B's resting heart rate? This is 60, so it starts from 60. Be because this is 60 and that's 70, goes up every 10 points. You know that every little uh, graph space is two marks. And if I count one, two, three, there are three little graphs, uh, uh, little boxes that have been covered from 60 to be before you get to 70. So that's extra six marks. So the answer to that is 66 beats per minute. 
the student started running at two minutes what evidence for this is on figure four if you look at figure four it stays here that from here to here there was nothing happening it's a straight line and then their heart rate suddenly shoots up from two minutes so that's your evidence the heart rate increases at two minutes so they started running at two minutes for how many minutes did the students run for if you go over to the graph, they started running at two minutes. Some students might be tempted to say, oh, this, they, then they stopped at 10 minutes. No, that was when their resting heart rate came, their heart uh, beat per minute came back to the resting um, heart rate. So actually, if you look at the peak here, which was six minutes after they started running, that was when they stopped running because down that downward side of the graph shows you that they were coming down, they were cooling down, their breathing was returning back to normal. So between two and, and um, this point six, you do six, take away two, your answer is four. Student B is fitter than student A. Use this figure to give two pieces of evidence that support this statement. Obviously, student B has a much lower resting heart rate. And if you also look at how the heart rate in beats per minute increased, how the heart rate of student B increased, it wasn't quite as sharp and it did not go as high when you compare it with that of student A. And eventually, when student A stopped running, the way they, they came, they, their heart rate returned to normal was much calmer and quicker. And that one was not even, that one was took a longer time to return to normal resting rate. So those are some of the reasons you give here to get your full two marks. There are other changes in the body during exercise. Explain these changes. When I asked this to my, question, my student, the very first thing they said was sweating. Now that is very obvious. When you start to run, you start to sweat. Now, sweating is a good thing because it helps you to cool down. But how does it do that? It's by evaporating. The water evaporates the heat and then your body temperature returns to normal. Another thing that happens is they're breathing more. They're breathing more because their muscle cells are requiring more oxygen to break down glucose to release energy. Because the muscle cells are working harder, they're needing to take in more oxygen, their heart is pumping more blood, and they're, they're, they're taking in that oxygen to be able to carry on respiring aerobically. That is breaking down glucose to release energy. And by the way, just so you remember, it is glucose plus oxygen, yeah? And it's water plus carbon dioxide. It can be either way, carbon dioxide and water, right? Now, that is the equation. Obviously, energy is released as well. On the question, they did show how much energy was released, is released by from aerobic and anaerobic respiration. But that's another question on that paper. So this is the equation for respiration. Just a quick reminder though, if you were to write that the other way, that would be the equation for photosynthesis. I always like to pop that in quickly. I hope you have found this very useful. If you have not seen my seven things you need to do to enable you raking a good 20 extra marks, please watch that video. And I have said today, data is a must. All data questions must be attempted, must be answered. Because just imagine on this paper alone, 36 marks. Not just 20, not just 30, 36 good marks that you can rake in. Remember, keep revising. Keep keeping positive. Remember, you must pass. Whatever you do, don't stop pushing yourself. Don't stop revising. And I pray that you have a very good day and you keep revising until you meet success at the end of the day. God bless you.